Hi everybody, Rachel here from ReachTheStamper.com. Um, I just wanted to share this quick video. This is in regards to my Valentine's blog hop entry for the Team Stamp It Group's blog hop. And um, I did mine a little bit different. These are clearly not traditional Valentine's colors or really even a set, but I thought this was a really great stamp set to use. This is actually a set that you can earn for free with the $50 purchase during celebration, which lasts through March 31st of 2019. And this stamp set's called By the Bay. I just loved it because of the seagulls. I thought they were so cute. I really do like the sentiments. However, the house is what captivated me. So I ended up using the house. So I kind of want to just give you a little tip of what I did for the coloring of the house in the background here. So what I did was I kind of used a combination of a few things that we've been doing lately. So the sentiment is actually from the well said stamp set and it has to my always from your forever it has a lot of really beautiful sentiments in it that are really great for valentine's day without saying necessarily happy valentine's day another one i thought was really sweet too was you mean the world to me i thought that was absolutely beautiful but this has a lot of really nice sentiments in it you can kind of mix mix and match them and this also has a die set and if you bundle these together, you save 10%. This has a lot of dyes in it. So you can see those there. There's also um, some flowers, a little flourish of flowers, and a little grouping of leaves. But this is a really great bundle. So again, you can buy that and save 10%. And then what I did on the inside, and I didn't adhere this, so I want to show you that way. I figured this would kind of save a little bit of trouble, is on the inside, I added the seagulls. And then I used, this is called Another Wonderful Year, and I just wrote Love You More. And I actually coordinated that with the Tranquil Tide. So this is also not a standard card size. This card, uh, the panel, I should say, this measures two and three quarters, and it's about a sixteenth of an inch shy of five inches. So the card panel, this is actually ten inches, and then I scored it at five. And then the actual card measures I believe it's yeah three and a half so this strip here is two and three quarters the full card is three and a half and then the same on the inside so this is two and three quarters and then I just layered it because I thought it was a beautiful card and it kind of gave a little bit more of a highlight with having it cut down now one other thing I wanted to show you is that I ended up smudging my sentiment when I put down so and I'll explain the reason why so what I did was I just stamped it onto a little piece of cardstock and I trimmed it out and I'm going to just attach this right over top of it and then you'll never know that I made a little goof so that works out perfectly well also however I did this on watercolor paper so I want to show you what I did first I tried it on whisper white and what I did was I was doing a combination of watercoloring and then also of blending again with the glycerin so what I did was I started out with the glycerin and just a regular paintbrush I added a little bit of color in that way, but you can see the Whisper White really warped. So then I moved over instead to a piece of watercolor paper. So basically, I'm going to show you how I did the background, and then all of the colors will be listed uh, for the rest of the painting as well. But what I did was I used Soft Suede for the kind of like, I don't know if that's really a bulkhead or a walkway. And then I used a combination of Shaded Spruce and Old Olive for the greenery. For the roof, I used Early Espresso, very watered down. For the color of the actual house, I used um, Gray Granite. And then the windows, I really lightly, I very, very much diluted the Bermuda Bay. And I did the windows. And then for the sky, I actually did this three different ways. So this is really, really light up top. This is a very, very, very diluted balmy blue. And I actually watercolored first, so I'll show you how to do that. And then it's a mixture of... Uh, coastal cabana and then kind of different shades of balmy blue so I'll share with you how I did this so first what you need to do is you're gonna mount your stamp and you're gonna want to stamp in stays on because we are doing more water coloring than anything but just a note when you do watercolor um, you want to make sure that you use watercolor paper so our paper it is two-sided one is a little smoother one is a little deeper it just kind of depends if you're going to use the deeper side I would highly recommend using your stamparatus just that way in case you need to re-ink it more than once you'll be assured that you get a, a good inking without having a, a basically like a shadow or a second generation image 
So I'm going to go ahead and ink this up with my stays on. And stays on, you cannot clean off of stamps. So it always will leave a little black mark, but it's not going to affect your stamp at all. And then what I kind of did was, with the cling stamps, it's really easy. Nothing falls off. But I kind of lined it up so that the bottom of it went almost off of the page. So I think this piece might be a teeny bit bigger than the other one, but you'll get the gist of what I'm doing. So I'm just going to press all over to make sure I get all those spots. And then the other thing that's kind of handy is when you're finished stamping your image to kind of keep this out. That way you can see what it looks like when you're coloring in. Because sometimes, I don't know if it's just me getting older or my eyes, but I have a hard time with exactly telling what it is that some of the images are. So I'm going to just clean this off. Anyway, but it does leave a little bit of a tint of black, but that's no big deal. It still works fine. So what I kind of do is I'll kind of leave this stamp out and you certainly can unmount it. That way you don't have trouble getting it off. But that way you can see what it is that you're doing. So essentially you do want to give this a moment to dry. And I could have stamped this just a little bit lower, but you could also go through and just trim it up so it matches. So what we'll do, just while I'm giving it one more minute to dry, is I'm going to go ahead and just trim this just to make sure that it goes to the edge. It's not even really very much, but about a hair. And same with that, just so we have this so it goes kind of to the edge of the picture. Now, I kind of did this similar to what I did the other day, whereas I took my balmy blue and I just kind of tapped it onto my block. And then I did the same with, and now that I'm thinking about it, I think I might have done Coastal Cabana for that first color. Yeah, and I think I added in the Bermuda Bay. I think I did do Bermuda Bay for the windows, but I did uh, Coastal Cabana. So this is kind of where it gets dicey. And the only reason I say that is because um, I added this in and did it a few different times just to see what's the best. So you may have to play with it a little bit. But what I did first, I'm going to add just a little bit of glycerin here. Okay. And now I'm going to start. I'm going to watercolor the sky portion first because I want this part to be the lightest. So what you're going to do is you're going to go in with your aqua painter. And so make sure that it's clean. And I'm going to just gently wet kind of around where I think the sky is here. So I'm not squeezing as I'm doing it. I'm kind of just making sure that the tip is wet and just making sure all of the place where I want the sky is wet. Okay, then I'm gonna go in, add a little water to this. Now I, don't, I don't want it super dark at this point. I want it pretty light, so I wanna make sure it's pretty diluted. And then I'm gonna just tap in color here. And since this paper is wet, what will happen is the sky will kind of fill in with the ink on the part that's wet. Now at this point you can take a straw and you can kind of blow the color around. You can tilt your paper so it's automatically gonna like gravity take it down a little bit if you want. And I don't want a really definitive skyline, but I just want to make sure that I have enough covered so it kind of creates your horizon, just like that. Now, with this brush, you can squeeze it out if you like, but we're going to kind of use it again. You can either do a paper towel, or if you just have like your regular um, work towel. What I did was I just went through with a spot that was dry, and I very lightly tapped just to absorb the water and basically to make the sky really light. So you can see here, there is color on there, but it's really, really light because we wanted to have different gauges of darkness, if that makes sense. So now the second thing I did was once again, I added some water to the Bermuda Bay or the Calypso Coral, sorry. Oh my gosh, Coastal Cabana. Jeez, I'm getting my colors mixed up. I just wanna make sure this is wet. And then what I did, 
and again, you kind of have to fool with this, is I got just a regular round tooth, uh, toothbrush, a round paintbrush. I think this is a number four. And I kind of wet, wet the paintbrush. And then I picked up a little bit of that glycerin. And then I just brought this over. So this is going to be darker. Again, because this is not wet. It's not pre-wet. So I'm just picking up some color and picking up a little bit of glycerin. And since we use stays on, that black ink should not run. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to go back with my towel and pick up. And then I'm going to add in the Bermuda. Same thing again, just kind of dabbing off some of it. Also did the same thing where I went back in with just the watercolor and added in some color and kind of went back and just, this works a little better with a paper towel because it kind of pulls the water off without mushing it around, if that makes sense. And then you just can keep adding in the different shades of ink. And if you want a spot where you want a little bit darker of a color, you can also go back in with your lid. And then you could pick up some more direct color from your lid and make it a little darker if you wanted to. Now, because the paper is already wet, it's definitely going to dilute a little bit better which is good. It's going to go back in and tap just a little bit. Now this, because of the pattern, it is picking up the pattern of the, the towel here. And I just want to get that a little bit softer. I'm going to use a little bit more balmy blue just to kind of add in. I'm kind of picking up just a little bit of the glycerin. And again, if this bothers you, you can use a reinker. You don't have to use your lid if you're concerned with how your lid is going to be. But you can also, when you're finished, you can just take your towel and just wipe your lid out. So that way you don't have to worry about anything that's going to transfer to your ink pad necessarily and then it's clean so so then if you're going to do it again all you have to do is just squeeze and you'll get a fresh puddle of ink to use okay so I'll dilute this just a little bit just like that so then I just basically repeated the whole thing now the one thing I wanted to tell you I kind of repeated it and toweled it off again until I got the desired color that I wanted. But one thing to keep in mind, when you do use the glycerin, it's really hard for it to get a nice smooth dryness to it. So I would avoid stamping directly to it because it will stay a little bit wet longer. As you can see, I watercolored this a while ago and that's still pretty wet right there. In here so I would just save yourself the effort if you've trimmed up your paper just stamp your sentiment and then you can trim it out and lay it on top which is what I'm going to do with this one eventually and then I just did the same thing so if you want your uh, so basically if you want your color to be really light on the roof I'll just show you this before we finish up what you would do is just wipe this up so I'll make a mess here I'm just gonna and you can just wipe your block right off if you want, you can go ahead and rinse it later in the sink with a little mild soap and water, but it's perfectly usable again. So if you want your image to be light, where you're going to, you're going to wet the area you're going to do first, then you're going to dip into your ink and then just lightly touch and kind of spread the ink around. You can go ahead back over. You can pick up your ink. You see it makes it really light again. You can lay more color on top of it. Same thing again, pick it up and it'll continue. You can make it um, darker if you want. 
you can let areas of it be darker. But that way, if you want it, certain things to be, like if you want this roof to be dark and this roof back here to be light, you just fill it in, tap it off, fill it in again, depending on how dark you want it. So that's the process you're going to repeat. But once again, when you do use glycerin on anything, so as the other day when I showed you these cards that we did, this was with the blending technique, this does stay very slippery. So you do need to be careful. It's very difficult to stamp onto. It's kind of like vellum where the, the inking doesn't necessarily stick to the glycerin because it's a very slippery surface. So anyway, I hope that you find this helpful. Um, if you haven't already, make sure you follow all the way through the blog hop. There's probably, I think, about 12 people entered. So 12 different Valentine ideas. And I'm just going to add this while I have you here just for one second. When you put things on here, again, it is a little bit difficult to get them to stick. So I usually use the Tombow liquid glue because that stuff pretty much will stick to anything, which is great. So I'm just going to put a little bit on the back. Oops. Pick this up without dropping it. And I'm going to just lay this right on top. Make sure it's right to the edge, nice and straight. You can go down a little bit if you want. Perfect. But anyway, there is a great prize. So make sure you follow this all the way through to the end. And if you leave your comment, plus your name, first and last name, and then you have to leave hashtag stamp it contest. Stamp it contest. Yes, that's what it is. Sorry, I had a brain fart. Then you'll be entered to win the prize. Always have really great. We have like some kits that we've given away and lots of really cool stuff. So Make sure you follow all the way through, not only for the ideas, but for the chance to win a prize. I hope you guys found this video helpful. And if you have any questions at all, all you have to do is send me an email at reachthestamper@gmail.com. Thanks for watching.